Hello and welcome to the Ask Assad Show. I'm Michael Gaines, and we are glad you're here as we continue to have conversations where we bring insight out and bring you both expert analysis and conversation about the world of energy and those that are helping make it happen day-to-day uh, -day here in our world. So we're glad that you're here. And uh, as always, we are also appreciative of you being a part of the conversation and sharing your thoughts and sharing your questions, both for our guests and uh, for our conversation. So to help us uh, just get some more insight on how you can uh, submit your questions and be a part of the Today Show, uh, we're gonna bring in Shelby Dumain to give us a little bit of insight there. So uh, Shelby, we are glad that you're here and uh, let us know how can folks be a part of today's conversation. Absolutely, Michael, and, and happy to be here as well. I think we have a really great show, really great guest uh, lined up for today. So if you watching at home uh, want to ask your questions of our guest or of Assad, uh, you can do so a couple of different ways. The uh, easiest way for sure is by commenting below, whether you're on Facebook, LinkedIn, or YouTube, where uh, I'm in the comment section throughout the entire show, watching those, seeing those questions coming in. Um, so if you have a question uh, before the end of the show, then we will be doing a Q&A there um, at the end and we'll try to get to as many questions as possible. And then after the show, if you wanna send us a message, maybe you have an idea for a future show or just would like to get in touch with us and ask another question, you can do so a couple different ways. The first uh, is on the screen now. You can email us at askassad at nov.com. So you can just send us a quick message. And then the second way, and, and uh, I've, I've said this before, but it's maybe my favorite because we actually get to um, hear from our audience, is you can give us a call. You can stay anonymous or you can leave your name with this option. Uh, but that number is on screen now. It's country code plus one three four six two two three four seven nine nine. So we would definitely love to hear from you all. Um, and then I look forward to seeing everybody's comments uh, on the show today. And and like I said, we're going to get to as many as we can for the Q&A at the end. Great. All right. Well, looking forward to getting some good conversations uh, or good good con conversation and questions in the uh, comment section. So thanks, Shelby. And uh, yeah, again, welcome to everyone that's just tuning in. Uh, we always are just fascinated and interested and appreciative uh, of the diverse uh, number of folks that join this conversation from around the world. So feel free to put in where you are joining us from in the comments section uh, so you can see uh, others as well and, and really uh, uh, enjoy seeing that. So thanks for, for joining us. Uh, so uh, we want to certainly also welcome the show's namesake, Asad Mahana, the Director of Business Strategy here at NOV. So Asad, uh, glad to see you. I, I know it's only been a week, but uh, it always feels like it's it's way longer. But I'm glad glad to see you today. That's right. Glad glad to see you too, Michael. I'm still trying to get used to this new camera you set me up with. Between looking uh, at my screen and the camera, it's a little confusing. Well, you know that's that's why we have a great production team because uh, <laughs> I'm not the one that that knows how to do this. It's, it's no, another couple of shows, and I'll be sure. there. Sure. Good. Well, uh, well, well. Glad, glad you're here in 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 Thank you. 1080p all the, all the way. Um, and and normally we would actually kind of jump in and talk about the the week in review and kind of what's going on. But uh, what, while there's always new things happening, I think today's a, a little bit of exception in terms of of our show format and and kind of the conversation we're having today. It, it is an exceptional episode and a, and a very special one as well. Uh, as you know, uh, Michael, um, NOV partners with uh, uh, players throughout the value chain, whether it's operators, it's drilling contractors, or service companies. Uh, we 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 work with 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 everybody uh, in in the value chain. And I think if it was one of those who's uh, sort of the most exposed in terms of uh, asset investments, in terms of uh, people on site uh, or plays a huge role in, in the whole engine of the upstream oil and gas. It's, it's the drilling contractor. So today, um, as the, the, the downturn takes a toll on some really good companies out there uh, and, and puts everybody in general uh, in, in a certain level of strain, uh, uh, we thought it's a, it's a good idea to, to bring in one of the world's leading uh, drilling contractors. Um, to uh, talk to us about how they've been navigating the uh, the nine months long downturn uh, 
um, and how they've been uh, kind of surviving this this new situation. So um, I want to want to welcome uh, our guest Joseph El Khoury, uh, CEO at KCA Doitag. Uh, welcome to the show. Thank you hey, both Joseph. for having me. How are you doing? Great, glad to glad to see you. Thanks for for joining us today, Joseph. Uh, I know this is, as Assad said, we're very appreciative and and glad that that you're here uh, joining us today. So, you know, for those that uh, that may not know uh, your, your your background, I, I want to know if you could maybe lead off today's conversation, maybe just sharing a little bit about about your background, how you uh, how you got to where you are today and, and what that's looked like, because as, as much as we certainly love to, to dive into the uh, the markets and the analysis at the end of the day, uh, you know, we're all we all are are walking stories. And I, I think it's a, a great opportunity to maybe share a little bit of your your story, if, if you don't mind. No, absolutely. Thank you again for for having me on. On your show. I think that in some way, uh, every team I work with and every individual that I have met along the way has helped me get here. Uh, I spent 21 years at Shlom Jay and I'm very grateful for all the training uh, I received early in my career. The mentorship, the lessons, uh, some of the opportunities I got through networking in the oil and gas industry and in the energy industry at large. Uh, I also um, or gained plenty of experience from working at Tetra Technologies and Apollo in the private equity space to look at investments in the energy technology space. And of course, you know, the encouragement and support of people that are closer to you along, along the ride, if you will. I developed earlier on an appreciation for leading and achieving through teams. And, and that remains my passion today. I think to really be successful and to be effective at that, one has to continue to learn, 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 learn and practice so without saying you have to read a lot, stay up to date, talk, listen, listen, listen more and make sure that the learning journey never, never stops really if you want to continue to grow both personally and, and professionally. I do believe that any success, uh, reaching any target you set for yourself or your team will depend on how hard you work. Nothing comes for free. I think uh, you have to be uh, taking initiative, you have to put hard and smart work into it to reach your goals. Now, in difficult times like these, you know, I sometimes question my own effective leadership, especially when, you know, you're in charge of people. Many leaders today uh, to deal with or virtually managing uh, teams together, we all have to adapt quickly and adopt maybe new ways of thinking and leading to stay on top of things. So I have found that I got here by practicing all those, but lately I've had to adapt and think differently to be able to really lead and manage through these un unprecedented times. And lately I've been saying internally uh, to our stakeholders, our employees and the communities where we work, that it is very important for us to pay attention to our own well-being. And it's very important for everyone to stay focused on what they can control. And that ma message is very powerful. I think it applies both at home and in the office or in the field. That's a, that's a, that's a, I think a bunch of things I, I can personally take from that. And, and I agree on, on listen, listen, listen. That's, a, uh, that's one I think everybody can, can take advantage from. Um, Joseph, uh, you have been uh, in your role as CEO um, for about a year, maybe a, bit, a little bit over a year now. Um, and uh, a few months into your job, uh, you got hit with one of the uh, biggest crises our industry uh, has faced. It's, uh, uh, we, we called 2014 uh, or 2015 a generational downturn. This one's probably uh, a, 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 a once in a century. Um, how has your your strategy changed? Uh, how have you reacted to accommodate with all that's changed around you? Yeah, I guess to to, to answer this question, I think let me take you back to before before I really started. I was lucky enough to get some 
time to prepare for my CEO role as CEO tag. So that was quite beneficial. My strategy going into the role was to fully understand how customers and the stakeholders of KCA Doitag perceive the company. Um, it is important to build on the good attributes and try to uncover the internal bottlenecks that you may see in any organization so that you can perform better or outperform your competition and deliver above expectations with your customer. And because I got that opportunity to understand what the company was all about, I went in with my day one message to all employees and I emphasized that everyone has to drive to zero. Um, that everyone had the responsibility, but also the authority to solve questionable activity. And I asked everybody to go beyond safety, things like discrimination or uh, disrespectful behavior, ethical behavior, and so on. But I also asked every employee at KCA Goitag to help me with three critical activities. Those were proactive collaboration. Uh, I really encouraged everybody to reach across the aisle, if you will, beyond the business unit. Uh, uh, you know, break down the barriers between corporate and things between different functions. And but I also asked everybody to really navigate customer centricity properly and spend a lot of time listening carefully to our customer so that we can understand their problems and try a new solution so that we are a valuable partner and contractor or a subcontractor. And then the third thing was to really ask everybody to start focusing on a bottom up contribution to the results of the company where everyone puts an entrepreneur hat, look at eliminating waste, preserving cash, becoming more effective, and hence improve profitability for the organization. And all that under the umbrella message that I've adopted for my CEO uh, tenure, which is hashtag enhance the brand. You know, to be honest with you, the pandemic, and prior to the pandemic, every leader's challenge, whether you have a pandemic, a downturn, remote working or virtual work communication remains a leader's biggest challenge how to reach everyone how to talk to everyone how to make sure that everyone understands what the game plan is what the big picture yeah. is how to make sure everybody knows how to contribute and their role in it now in the last six months you asked me what has changed i believe kta Boytag's workforce has responded extremely well and i would be amiss if i didn't thank every employee i'm very grateful to all of them especially for the field and that we have in some places uh, have not been able to see their families in the last six or seven or even eight or nine months in some cases due to travel restrictions and i'm forever grateful to that uh, workforce i think the pandemic has created a lot of hardship. these are unprecedented times i mean they're not the downturn this is a once in a lifetime a disaster that we have to deal with and learn how to manage and learn how to uh, counter that by staying a little bit optimistic and adopt a, maybe a positive mindset, uh, if you will, to support one another. The pandemic has also showed us, showed us all that was that what was taboo in the past uh, is not anymore. That we can accelerate our efforts with digitalization or technology, virtual working. That you know, as workforce everywhere. We can adapt quickly and adopt new ways of thinking. So this is maybe a silver lining of this, this whole pandemic. Right, right. Uh, that we can find creative solutions to the problems that we're all faced with. Uh, that we, we all you know, can think like entrepreneurs at home and try to manage you know, our professional and personal lives. Um, I th think there is a silver lining. We have to stay optimistic and, and adopt a, a positive uh, mindset. But, but not right. everyone does accept that change should not be scary anymore because this is the biggest change we're going to experience in our own mm. lifetime. Everybody that is working today, I don't think has experienced anything like this. And saying that, managing change is really the norm rather than the exception. And right. this is a baptism by fire, if you will, so that everybody does it properly. Yeah. So a, a high level of agility, uh, communication, empowerment of the people and take advantage of innovation and, and technology is what I hear. And, and I got to attest to your presence, Joseph, on, on, uh, on LinkedIn and your communication within the organization. I can see that in uh, uh, a, a admiring way of, of reaching out. So uh, it's, it's, it's visible what you're doing. Um, I, I want to touch on. I, I know we're 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 uh, 
we have a question for you about technology in a little bit. But first, I want to want to talk a, a little bit about uh, uh, collaboration. I know you're you're big on that. You've you've mentioned it in a few places. Um, uh, NOV and and KCA Doitag are uh, are 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 partners uh, in a lot of places. Uh, I know we've our teams have worked together on uh, multiple occasions. Um, although we do compete in some other places, um, but uh, in, in partnerships like these uh, is is how we've uh, found room to to improve, uh, increase efficiencies, increase safety. Um, I, I wanna I wanna get it from from you uh, a little bit on how can can recovery for our industry today uh, use that collaboration to, uh, to 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 get over what we're in. Yeah, uh, I, I think that's a very good question. Uh, uh, some, you know, people may not, but I think, in my view, thinking like a traditional oil and gas or oil field services outfit is no longer a viable option. Mm -hmm. uh, moving out of the pandemic as the lockdowns ease or as the oil demand starts recovering, it is, it will be very difficult to move away. For me, for example, as a drilling contractor, in, at the time being, uh, uh, an alternative, for example. So, what we have to do to answer this particular question and help our EMP operators, while oil prices are low, while oil demand recovers or not, is to think outside the box. And collaborative effort is is there. I think one thing that we have to do. And we were doing it between 2014 and 2020. Is continue to sign many agreements and historically, historically low contract value. So in order to find this solution, uh, and it's not going to be easy, we cannot continue to do the same things and expect our customers to pay anymore. So yeah. uh, I think part of what seeing in the in the oil feed services space as well a lot of the oil feed services have become begun to to retrench somehow to their core core typical core value or core product or what they're really best at when we all start doing this we will naturally want to team up with others that outperform in their space with the complementary services that our customers want i yeah. think that collaboration among the service providers may become the norm, may become more acceptable, may become a target that organizations like yours and ours, for example, will have to. You know, building these alliances may become very natural to the players because if you don't, you are going to slowly get out of business or not be profitable enough to survive. So I think alliances, collaboration, the one team approach that some of the operators have adopted have already proven in some expensive plays the benefits that they can provide. I think it is time for us to adopt these collaborative efforts and business models in, in the middle of, of our activity rather than where it's expensive, like offshore, for example, right? The winners are going to be the ones. And again, this is my view, that collectively and collaboratively managed to deliver the most effective cost to operate to the customer. I think sure. it is paramount. It is paramount that we invest in figuring out what we're best at, become better at it, and deciding all things to every customer. So retrenching focusing on what you're good at, becoming the best at it, and finding partners to deliver the same service is going to be key for us to succeed. So, uh, Joseph, I, I really appreciate your, your perspective, and I know uh, that that you have really dialed in in, in, in many fronts. Uh, so I kind of wanted to pose a, a question to you briefly. I know that we're, we're, uh, we, we've got a few more questions for you as well, but I uh, want to see if we can maybe rapid fire a couple to you. Uh, so as you look at uh, really digitalization and technology, and you, you, you mentioned it just uh, a moment ago, uh, you know, we, we continue to see uh, a push towards, uh, you know, the uh, technologies that help in, in the space of reduction of, you know, personnel on board, certainly reducing risk, getting folks out of the red zone, you know, reducing that, that overall 
uh, risk profile. So, you know, we kind of look at the, you know, remote ops, digitalization, you know, all, that, that kind of umbrella of approach. How do you look at that uh, for KC at Deutag? What, is, what does that look like for you? Yeah, I think innovation is most effective when you continue to make an improvement over a period of time. I mean, the iPhone started with the first original version, and then you have iPhone 11, soon iPhone 12. And if you compare both, I mean, you look at the iPhone the first version, and you say, uh, how did I live with that phone, right? But I think that consistent improvement is paramount. Our industry has historically and in general been a slow adopter of technologies that are not related to understanding the borehole and reservoir environment. In those places, we have always been leading. Now, in drilling, like you mentioned, we will all continue to invest in technology that allows us to make improvements in well delivery, in, in performance of the well, in delivery of the well, and the, the cost, whether it's improving ROP, reducing time on bottom, improving surface safety and reliability, removing personnel, like you mentioned, from the red zone, or the line of fire, or potentially removing all personnel of the rig floor altogether, enabling remote access, remote control to the, to the rig itself or the drilling environment. Customers can really share with you if you're listening. They can your problems and you can come with innovative ways and creative ways to invest and, and, and you know come up with a solution that is specific to them as well. But we may also So one of the things powering the rig now that everybody is moving into a lower carbon footprint, we may think about the electrification of our equipment. All, all that sounds too exciting, and we will need to engage each other like in a collaborative effort to provide these solutions to the customers. Now, there is also much to benefit from the other emerging technologies out there that are not created in the oil and gas or the energy space. The environment has really changed. You mentioned digitalization. So it's becoming more mainstream for us and for our industry. I think mindsets have been changing prior to the pandemic. I think the pandemic may have and will accelerate that as well as a focus area for us. In particular, we have, if you think about it, we have a mobile enabled workforce today. How can we make use of that? Everybody has a smartphone, right? If they're not working, they won't have the smartphone. But in every other environment, how can we use of that? I think uh, electronic tracking has become very cheap and it's yielding vast amounts of data. Are we using this data? Is it pure? Is it connected? Are we are we making use of all the uh, of data that we're creating? And lastly, the third is this digitalization effort is cloud storage and computing. Today, those have those technologies have become extremely accessible. They are are very cost effective and in addition technologies have become readily ai enabled where we have not developed those technologies or or that effort internally in our industry for example i think leaders have to be able to, now that i think about it clearly have to be able to cut through the noise understand how it may impact their supply chains and their operations we all have to stay disciplined but we all, all also have to to maybe manage the investment, manage wisely the investment so we can focus on trends that are very dangerous to ignore, if I might say. And, you know, when you set ambitious goals to your organizations, most organizations respond if they know what the problem is. Yeah, so Joseph, I uh, it, so it looks like we have a little bit of connection issue uh, uh, on, on the last part there. So I, I think I want to maybe see if we can uh, get to one more question. Maybe Assad, uh, you can can get to that, and uh, and we can continue the conversation. So apologies for uh, for any any delay there. Yeah, you, you you can't you can't have a discussion today Did you want uh, me without to... touching on energy transition. Go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead, Joseph. No, I was saying. You know, I don't know which part broke up, but we can just one. We can provide additional colors. Yes, yes. I'll go ahead with the question. Uh, I, I was saying, um, 
in, in terms of energy transition, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure KCA Doitag's taken a, uh, a fair amount of effort to, to get into, into that space. Uh, and I'm pretty sure your customers too are, are, are asking you to, to get into that space and bring your skill set into, into new areas. I know you're, you're doing some things with uh, offshore wind substations. You're doing some, some hybrid battery uh, 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 power unit technology. Um, and we've seen some things in the news about geothermal. Um, what, what's uh, what's uh, Joseph's take on that? And, and, and how does DCA Doitec take on energy transition? Yeah, uh, Asa, thank you. Uh, you know, with regards to energy transition, I would like to at least share with you the anecdote of the frog in a pan of water, right? If you drop a frog in boiling water, the frog will be safe. But if you put the frog in a pan of water and you heat the water, the frog will continue to adapt to that heating environment and eventually will lose all energy to jump out of the pan. I think what has happened is suddenly the pandemic is the water, and those that cannot jump will slowly, you know, get out of business with regards to the energy transition in particular. Having said that, I think it's become an existential issue to our customers as well. I mean, they are unable to keep their stakeholders, they are unable to keep their investors satisfied, so they all have to act. I mean, forget being nice to the planet, forget that is it is good business, forget all the maybe. supportive um, data that tells us that the energy transition is a must. I think we've seen the latest developments uh, with some of our bigger customers in the last couple of months, whether it's announcements or actions that have been taken, you know, with uh, Exxon and the Dow, with the announcement that BP made or Shell just kind of shared with the, with, the org with, the, with the rest of the world. I think for me personally, I think we should not resist the energy transition. I think we should enable it. It is good business. It is good for the planet. It's good for us. Uh, yeah. It employs people. We have to find ways to be creative and innovative as well. At KCA Doita, we want to leverage our know-how. We have RDS, our engineering specialists. We have our Bentec manufacturing and engineering facility. We need to start this journey by reducing our own carbon footprint. Help yeah. our own customers do it as well where we operate them, whether it's land building offshore platforms, and so on. We are, like most, still in the early stages of this effort. So I'm not going to outsell or speak or market what we do, but we have now a battery energy storage system that we can certainly help our customers, with, whether it's offshore or land operations or even our own operations. So we're looking to, to continue to deploy some of it through pilot programs, collaborative efforts, uh, field tests with, with some of our partners and customers. We have begun to look for partners. So we're able to provide maybe larger, more complex carbon reduction and carbon storage uh, solutions or carbon capture uh, solutions. We are focusing our teams and support the geothermal activity. In fact, most of our activity in Europe is around geothermal and we're well placed to help those customers continue yeah. to uh, deliver on their projects. We're, we, we also are, um, you know, in the beginning of, of, of this journey as a company. We have uh, developed concepts for modular, deeper water, offshore substations, like you mentioned. We presented those at Offshore Wind Europe, and we will continue to engage with our customers to do it. Because that's know-how that we have developed over a decade or more, right? So we need to kind of build on that. But to be honest, there is also still much to learn for us as we take this journey with our customers, especially around other facets of the industry, like complete circular solutions and the hydrogen economies that everybody is talking about, just to name a couple of examples. Yes. Great. So, uh, Joseph, so I think I think this has been good. I, I, I think we've seen uh, just a little bit of some uh, connection issues in our, our conversation. And, uh, you know, we talked about technology, which I think is great. And... I think in this world of remote uh, conversations, sometimes uh, it can be be a little bit challenging. So what I, what I want to do in order to to uh, preserve the fidelity of our conversation is see if we can uh, maybe put a pause here uh, in today's conversation and wrap around to to do some Q and A because I think we had some really great insight from you, and I want uh, certainly the audience, and I think you could uh, uh, certainly 
uh, agree that we want to make sure that folks are able to to engage uh, as best as possible. So what we'll do is see if we can have an opportunity to to have a, a, a focused Q and A session uh, at, a, at a future date once we can uh, uh, get together again. Because I think this is really really insightful and the the feedback ideas and uh, initiatives that we're able to outline today sound like they are really making some some great progress. So I, I appreciate you certainly being here with us, uh, 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 Joseph uh, and Assad, thank you as well for- And, and I, gotta, I gotta say, uh, really appreciate Joseph's uh, outlook and, and perspective on this. I think if, if it's one thing, it's taking things uh, away from the traditional way we've been doing things and uh, connecting with, uh, with the people, connecting with our employees, embracing change uh, to, to, to recover, recover from the downturn stronger. So appreciate you uh, being with us today, uh, Joseph. Great, great perspective. Yeah, absolutely. So, so we will uh, be sure to circle around and ensure that we're able to have a, 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 a follow-up Q&A session where uh, those of you watching can pose your questions to uh, Joseph and, and we can uh, hopefully uh, get, get that conversation going for you. So uh, thank you for joining us and certainly for being a part of the conversation. If there are questions that you'd like for us to be able to pose, uh, we encourage you to send an email to askassad at nov.com and uh, we will go ahead and collate those. And uh, again, we will go ahead and set up a future conversation uh, with Joseph in order to get uh, those questions answered. So I'm sure uh, you will certainly want to join us there. So uh, from all of us here at NOV, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, we apologize for the connection issues, but look forward to having uh, uh, Joseph back again, where we can uh, have the Q&A session and get those questions answered. So thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for watching and for listening, and we'll talk to you next time.